On this episode, we explore how one epic battle created one epic holiday dish, the Beef Wellington. Beef Wellington is as grand as its namesake suggests, an opulent and refined dish reserved for the most important of occasions and holidays. It's a dumbishly luxurious meal, but it can be difficult to pull off for many aspiring cooks. So if you make it well, well done. But how did this delicate dance between flaky puff pastry and tender beef fillet come to be? Let's uncover the history together. On each episode of History Eats, we uncover the clever and unexpected origin stories behind the iconic dishes we know and love today. We'll trace one delectable dish back to its roots to understand the history, then fast forward and see how it's inspired two of today's top chefs. And finally, I'll take you into the kitchen to prep a version you can call your own, creating an inspired dish that elevates your favorite meals. So raise your chalices high as we celebrate the food that brings us together for the moments that matter most on History Eats. Brought to you by Stella Artois. What if I told you that two amazing holiday traditions were born two towns apart? In Waterloo, Belgium in 1815, Arthur Wellesley, the first Duke of Wellington, defeated Napoleon Bonaparte. Chefs commemorated Wellesley's epic victory with a grand dish bearing his name, and that dish was Beef Wellington. Our second holiday legend was crafted nearby in another Belgium town called Leuven. There, in 1926, Stella Artois made a special batch of beer as a Christmas gift for their beloved town. The rest is history. Now, Beef Wellington and Stella Artois have journeyed across the world from their homes in Belgium to bring people together for the most special occasions. My first stop is Vancouver's Black and Blue, a fine dining steakhouse that believes that doing things the traditional way is the only way. Executive chef, Chef Jerome, is a master at the art of steak. He lives for it. This time-honored tradition of cooking meat over fire flows through his veins. And today, he's going to show us how to make his most favorite food experience, the Beef Wellington. Chef, you have absolutely gone above and beyond. Thank you. Thank this you. Is incredible. So the Beef Wellington, that was created when Napoleon lost a battle. And I think that's what makes it quite interesting for most of the French people. It's been created in England, even though most of the produce and technique are French, like the Duxelles, the puff pastry, the mash. It's all the basic for French food. So but is it a French or an English dish? England and France always have a battle of who is the best. But I think that dish proved that if they work together, they can make the perfect dish. <laughs> While Beef Wellington is considered one of the great British dishes, it sure does closely resemble the French filet de boeuf en croute. So is this dish actually French? It would appear that way, and it's the decadent duxelle as a key ingredient in both dishes that gives it away. Made from finely chopped mushrooms, onions, and shallots, the duxelle was named after French noble Marquis Duxelle and he's about as French as it gets. Christmas would be really perfect if you could do that for Christmas. It's, it takes a bit of time, but if you wake up quite early in the morning and then you spend a few hours in the kitchen, you can have a nice lunch with the whole family or nice family dinner. Yeah, you know, around the holiday time is when you're together. Mm -hmm. You're making these, you know, bigger dishes that yeah. take a little bit more time, but everybody's either watching from afar mm -hmm. or they're in the kitchen. And waiting for it to be And ready. waiting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's a classic. I mean, to me, a classic should always stay a classic. You could have a few variation, but a classic dish like this one shouldn't be touched. I appreciate tradition. I mm -hmm. appreciate classics. But I'm also someone that is always trying to modernize. I'm mm -hmm. trying to, you know, do a variation. As chefs, we we try to take recipes and dishes and we make it our own. We, mm -hmm. we add a little accent. But it sounds like you are true to the form of just always delivering that tradition. Yeah. Thank you. No, thank you. It's been a really good day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Black and Blue's traditional beef wellington was, well, delicious. Can you make it any better than that? Did you know that wellingtons can be more than just beef? Take Mila in Vancouver. They've managed to make a plant-based wellington. I need to see this for myself. Self-trained and changing the world as we know it. 
Chef Brienne is paving the way for elevated plant-based cooking in British Columbia. Flavor focused, Brienne is breaking all the rules and changing people's perspective on premium vegan dining. Chef, this is beautiful. This is incredible. The sage, the mm -hmm. walnuts, all of these elements. It's just so, so beautiful and it's so complete. Yeah, we wanted to take the flavors from the entire holiday table and put them into one bite, one area. And just one bite of Chef Rianne's plant-based Wellington holds 23 ingredients to give you just a taste of what's inside that perfectly flaky vegan puff pastry. We're talking cremini mushrooms, fragrant garlic, shallots, and thyme mixed with walnuts, red beets, miso paste, soy sauce, white kidney beans, and one last key ingredient, vital wheat gluten, a high protein staple that gives Mila's Wellington a surprisingly chewy, meaty texture. See my face right now? Yeah, this Wellington is really, really good. Recreating a beef Wellington wasn't the goal. It was to make something that was really, really hearty and really, really welcoming and comforting at the holidays. When I think about all the vegans who have sat at holiday tables and eaten <laughs> steamed Brussels sprouts, and they've eaten, you know, plain potatoes, or just, and I've been at those tables, that I wanted to create something that wasn't, that they could take to their family dinner and they could take home and say, you know, this is what we eat. It's not all about steamed vegetables. Yeah. But I think the history for me and my interpretation of my idea of the Wellington was that it was a family-based meal. And it, what, it did come out of the holidays and it was a special occasion. And so treating the holidays and treating this dish as a special occasion was, was the goal. My time at Mila and Black and Blue really inspired me to do something special. I realized that it doesn't matter if a Wellington is made with meat or simply vegetables. This is a dish that is rich and decadent and a perfect meal to serve over the holidays. One thing both chefs used in their recipe was the mushroom excel, and that's what inspired me to make my wild mushroom wellington. All right, we're gonna get started with chopping our mushrooms. These ones, you really wanna not slice them too thick, nice and thin, but kind of midway. Our king oysters I've already sliced, and they've been sliced for length. And the shiitakes, I'm just gonna remove the stems. I'm leaving my mushrooms a little bit large. We wanna see them. I'm gonna take those over to the pan and give them a light saute on a hot, 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 hot pan with a bit of olive oil, salt, and eventually some butter. And then we'll finish those off with a bit of mushroom stock to create a nice saucy mushroom ragu in a pan. So next I'm gonna take my already blanched Swiss chard. I'm gonna remove the stems. And the reason why I'm moving these stems are really so that when I'm folding together my Wellington, I wanna make sure that there's nothing that's gonna break my puff pastry. So I've steamed and cooked our lentils for about 20 minutes until they're al dente. So next, let's build our wild mushroom wellington. All right, so we have our puff pastry that's been chilling in the fridge. So immediately, the first thing that we're gonna place down is our Swiss chard. Next, we're gonna go down with our lentils. So that's gonna go right in the middle. This is almost like a flat space that you can place the mushrooms right onto. You really don't want to place hot mushrooms on the puff pastry. It will just melt out all the butter. So we are just make sure that they're nice and cool. I'm going to be pretty generous with the amount of mushrooms. Now what we're going to do is we're going to place our puff pastry right on top. The most important part of really making a great Wellington is to get all of that air out because it might burst open and then you'll lose the shape of the Wellington. All right, so now I've sealed it in. I'm gonna trim away all the extra puff pastry. Now I'm gonna crimp my sides to give it some shape and some form. So we have two eggs with a bit of water in our brush. We're just gonna do a little egg wash over the top. The egg wash really gives that that golden brown color. I'm just gonna make a couple slits in there just for design. And then we'll place it into our oven, a 400 degree oven for about 25 to 30 minutes. We really want to get that brown golden color. That's what really truly makes this Wellington so unique and so special. Look at that. Ah, look at the golden brown. The egg wash really, really helped to bring this color together. I mean, it's nice and flaky. Some of the mushrooms are kind of peeking out. 
This is a beautiful, beautiful tribute to a classic Wellington, the wild mushroom Wellington with the edamame, butternut squash, and walnut succotash. Truly a classic in the making. Some say beef Wellington is the ultimate indulgence with that flaky puff pastry, delicious duke salad, and of course, the juicy center. It's too good to resist. A perfect holiday meal showstopper, Beef Wellington allows home cooks and restaurant chefs to display their culinary proudness in just one dish. Because sometimes impressing your friends with food is the truest form of affection. So charge forward, my foodie friends, on the culinary battlefield.